structured My name's Owen Rosansky, KD3ALD. I am a freshman computer engineering student from the University of Scranton, and this is my project on the development of a contesting and DXing dashboard for the Hamsai Personal Space Weather Station. So a uh, little, just a little bit of background is um, we want to use data from the Personal Space Weather Station to uh, help contesters and DXers to know where bands are going to be open, when they're going to be open, what kind of activity is going to be on the band, and then uh, in the future we want to integrate it with external data and to and better help with a general understanding of HF propagation, propagation and um, just general general HF knowledge for contesting and NDXing. A uh, special thanks goes out to the Frankfurt Radio Club uh, for funding this project as well as Bud Trench and Ray Sokola, uh, AA3B and K9RS for their help. Hi, I'm Mindy, Kilo Mike One, November Delta Yankee, and this is my poster at the 2025 Ham Sci Workshop. This is the effect of near total solar eclipse on radio propagation of high frequency weak signal propagation reporter known as WISPR transmissions. Uh, just really briefly, what my data shows is that uh, during the solar eclipse, that the 20 meter and 30 meter bands had an elongation in propagation when you looking at whisper transmissions. You can see over here the red pre the maximum of the solar eclipse and then the blue post the solar eclipse where we pick up Europe on both of these bands. This was not shown on uh, any anything other than 20 and 30 meters when it came to statistical significance. And the best part about this is it's a single ham radio operator who was able to do some science and present it here at HamSci. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Hi, I'm Gerard Piccini from uh, the University of Grant. Uh, I'm KD2ZHK. Uh, and my project is a low-cost, low-power uh, trip ionosonde for studying eclipse ionospheric impacts. And so essentially what we're doing is we're making a simple vertical incidence uh, ionosan uh, where we uh, transmit a narrowband chirp uh, vertically and time how long it takes for, the, uh, for it to refract in the ionosphere and come back to the, uh, our receiver. And uh, in doing so, we are able to calculate the virtual layer height of the bottom side of the ionosphere and uh, the F2 region to be a bit more specific. And we did this during the duration of the uh, 2024 total eclipse and continued to record over the rest of the day. Uh, and that's this plot we have here. Um, and in this plot, the blue line is the data we collected. And the orange line is data from Wallops Island on the same frequency. And so what's really nice about this plot is it shows uh, a very strong uh, correlation between our data and Wallops Island data, uh, except for a bit here. but. Uh, we believe that there might have been some ionospheric activity here uh, either way. Hi, I'm Steve Stroh, N8GNJ, and I'm here to talk, I'm here talking about the IP400 networking project, which is, you can think of packet radio in the 21st century. It's a brand new system, brand new protocol, brand new concept. One of the biggest differences is that it's going to be a mesh networking system. Uh, it will automatically form meshes, tear them up or put them up, tear them down, and it will also be a transparent system where existing protocols like AX25, TCPIP, even MMDVM will all get just tunneled through. Think of this thing as Ethernet cables and an Ethernet switch for amateur radio use. That is the radio. It is a chipset and module. That does all the heavy lifting of the things we used to have big boards for. This is the radio, antenna connector, power, a little bit of signal conditioning, and the, the brains of the outfit is a Raspberry Pi. That's the I.O. connector for a Raspberry Pi. And this one is going to be simple enough, cheap enough, uh, that you can use a Raspberry Pi Zero. More information about this project, I'm covering it very regularly in my newsletter, Zero Retries, which is www 
zero, Z-E-R-O, retries, R-E-T-R-I-E-S dot org. Hi, I'm Jack, W9RFT with KDKE8LQR and Taylor, uh, KE8KWZ. And we're here today at HamSci uh, introducing why you should attend Youth on the Air Camp. So Youth on the Air Camp is a week-long camp for young amateur radio operators, 15 through 25. Uh, throughout the week, we do lots of different things from contesting to CW to POTA and satellites. Um, Yoda Camp is run by youth for youth, so most of the session presenters are going to be in the 15 through 25 age range or slightly older. You'll also you'll get to learn about a lot of things that you might not get to learn about at your local club as well. So you'll be able to find lots of young Elmers and mentors, even if you don't have someone for those subjects in your local amateur radio club.